In this tutorial, we are looking at a custom flange made in SOLIDWORKS sheet metal. Let's get into it. So I've opened um, SOLIDWORKS uh, 2022, but this can be used on any version of SOLIDWORKS. Any of the uh, tips and tricks I'm showing you are not using shortcut keys and they're native to SOLIDWORKS versions from 2015 up to 2022. So we're file, new, and part, okay. So we're just opening a blank part and we're setting it up as a sheet metal part. A sheet metal tab is um, open there. And we'll start off. So top plane, normal two. So we're drawing on the top plane. We're going to sketch. We're going to use a circle. Center origin of the circle is on the origin of the top plane. Drag out our circle. And we'll stay with the um, 250 millimeter um, radius, our diameter. So this gives us our base part, and our sketch for our base part. So our sheet metal, base flange, and we leave it at the 10 millimeters as well. And we now have our 10 millimeter with a diameter 250 millimeter blank. We're clicking that top face, we're going normal too. So first of all, we want to add a hole to the center of this flange. And we're calling this location hole for um, pipework. So top face of the flange, normal two, new sketch, and then we're drawing a circle. We're saying that circle is a 100 millimeter diameter. And we're clicking OK. So we now have a circle that's 100 millimeters in diameter on the front face of our base and um, sheet metal component. So if it goes to features, cut extrude. Now see that we have an option saying link to thickness. So since this is a sheet metal part, SOLIDWORKS knows that it is a 10 mil thick sheet metal part. So when we cut extrude and we click link to thickness, it is telling SOLIDWORKS to cut 10 mil or the whole way through that component. Click and we end up with a washer. When we're designing components for SOLIDWORKS and especially for um, manufacture, you might create a blank component that would be cut with a laser or plasma cut and then that component might be machined at a later stage or you might make the component and just machine it straight all depends what capabilities that you have for manufacture so for this component we're saying that they're going to cut a blank and then they're putting it into their milling machine and milling out all the edges features we apply. So if we say that this is for pipe location and we now want to make a step down so that the pipe will sit in, we will click the face again, we would click sketch, we draw another circle, we dimension that sketch and we'll call it 105 millimeters in diameter we click OK. We then want to cut into our section, so we go cut extrude. Now our link to thickness is clicked, but that would cut the 105 millimeter diameter straight through our component. We only want to bring it down to a five millimeter depth. So on click link to thickness, 
put in our dimension of five and click OK. Now we have a step. The object being that our pipe sits in to the outer radius, our step stops the end of the pipe from passing through and then we can weld the full direction around the pipe. If this component is to be machined and you wanted to make a fillet um, or a chamfer to let in the pipe the way it will sit better you go chamfer fillet and under fillet is chamfer and we will say a 2.5 mil chamfer at a 45 degree on the base we turn on full preview on the base. Now that will let the pipe sit in, but if that chamfer is too deep, we can go back, go chamfer, and we'll say one mil chamfer. Perfect. If we're to chamfer around our component, click the down box again, chamfer, and we leave it at 2.5 millimeters, and we select this edge and click OK. So this is now our um, component. Click the front face, click normal too. Okay, so we want to set up a line of um, holes on this face. We're saying click the face, click sketch, Take our circle, center it again, drag our circle out. If we look under the uh, feature tree, and we look down, we have options for construction. And we're going to click that for construction. So this is a sketch, and we're now going to mark locations for our holes. The sketch is blue at this present moment because it's an undefined sketch. One rule of SOLIDWORKS is always have everything defined. We said our plate was 250 millimeters, our pipe was 100 millimeters, so we will push our hole centers at 175. Click. Now our sketch is fully black which means our sketch is fully defined. Go over to our line, drop down, take a center line, and we drop that center line from the center point, the origin, up to the edge of our circle. Click select. As you can see, that line turns black automatically, meaning that it is fully defined. Now, so our next one, we're going to circle circular sketch pattern it's under linear pattern and we have our parameters this can sometimes be a bit haphazard sometimes it'll work perfectly sometimes it won't and then we go and we click on our circle patterns to end uh, entities to pattern is our line and as you can see four lines equally spaced if we want to change to six we now have six lines equally spaced we click ok this is what i had said about sometimes that um, circular feature is a little bit half hazard sometimes it won't stay on the correct um, source but if we take that source I just drag it up everything defines now we have six hole positions so we close our sketch we then travel to hole wizard now we could drop our um, circular sketches to make six holes and an extrude but it's always better practice to use hole wizard in this version we're going to use a countersink 
we're saying ISO. Now there's plenty of different options that you can use for cheese head, etc. But we're saying it's an ISO O and we're using a 10 mil. We need positions. Click positions, click our face, and it brings up our double circle. Outer circle is obviously the, um, the countersink. Size fully. We're clicking one. Always click on the center of the dots. Two, three, four, five, six. These are our six countersunk holes. We click position, OK. Now you can see our six countersunk holes have traveled through. So if we go back and we click again, we can then modify our sketch. Instead of 175, we change it to 200 to expand the diameter of our hole centers. Click. Once you click back from the sketch, now our hole centers are out that much more. Okay, so say if we wanted to add intermittent slots. And a feature I very rarely use is a tapered, um, a countersunk slot gives us a front face direction. We're going to say new sketch on that face. Adding a center line. And we'll say we'll put that center line exactly in the center of our two holes. Then we take another center line and we put it circular. Now, I need that center line to break this center line. Take this one, and we can see the midpoint is there. Click on this center line, right click, select midpoint. Hold down the shift button, select that second line that crosses. When you let go of the shift button, you'll see it says make coincident or make midpoint. So we're clicking coincident. Now, this line is exactly the center of those lines on that radius. So I'm just going to show a different way that you can achieve the slots um, instead of using a linear circle, circular pattern. So we close our sketch. Now have our point marked. We will go back to hole wizard we will say we're picking countersunk slot, 10 mil, we're calling our slot 12.5 mil in length, and our end condition is true all. Back to positions. We're clicking our front face, and we're putting the center of our slot in this center position. Click. Now you can see it brings up a blue line, and it brings up the sketching underneath. Put that blue line on that sketch to rotate our slot. Click our arrow up here. Click that line. While holding shift, click the other line. And we say collinear. And it turns that slot. Now if you want to change the distance of the slot, etc., it's all here. Properties, okay, okay. And now we have the slot in the plate. Okay, so I want to show you a different way of achieving that circular pattern with the same slot. So if we go to linear pattern on the features, we click circular pattern. Once again, these circular patterns can be a little bit odd, but we're selecting that edge, features and faces. So we want to select this feature. But you, if you can't select that feature just from our graphics, so we drop down, 
we select it here. Now you can see we have six equal spaces of the same feature the whole way around. And we click Go. To hide our sketches, click on our sketch. Icons will come up, click Hide. That hides one sketch, click it again, click Hide to hide the second sketch. And there is our plate. As always, I would just put in uh, material for aesthetics. If you press your sta space bar, you have an orientation window. Under here, you have isometric, which is the one we usually use. And we go File, Save As, Save. If you want to take a DXF of this plate, you turn the plate, click Normal to, that rotates the plate to make sure. Click Normal to, we now know we have the back end of this plate. Click it again, right click, export to DFX, save. We're saying faces, loops and edges, save. And here is our DFX. The reason you take a DFX at the back of the plate is because if you try to take a DFX at the front of the plate, you will get all the chamfers and the holes will be completely out of um, sync. So for the drawing that you'd produce for this type of plate, you would always mark that the DFX is taken from the back of the plate. If the, this goes to be cut, that operator can see that if you had a left and a right, which side he needs to cut what from, and then the machinist can see which side he needs to chamfer. That was another simple tutorial on SOLIDWORKS sheet metal. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.